Grief is such an overpowering emotion, especially after losing someone so close to you. It can take months, years, even decades to get back to normal, if that's even possible after experiencing a significant loss. This podcast is created to help you move through and release the emotions, allowing you to heal the hurt and begin living again. Listen in as I chat with medical professionals, grief workers, and people who have firsthand experience in losing a loved one, what their experience has been, and what they did to help heal themselves and those around them. Life isn't always sunshine and rainbows, but I believe there is always a silver lining if you're willing to look. Welcome to the Release Podcast. Welcome to another episode of Release Grief Podcast. Today, I'm taking a little bit of a turn from my normal uh, grief, loss, and bereavement to uh, talking with Josh Wilson about losing a substan- losing a substantial amount of money um, in some business deals and the emotions, the grief, the 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 turmoil and the emotions and stuff that are associated with that and the impact that it has upon your life. So welcome, Josh. Thank you so much for being on this podcast. I'm excited to chat with you. Yes. No, looking forward to talking and uh, got a lot uh, to unpack, uh, you know, when uh, we went through that loss. And so a lot of lessons learned. Oh, I bet. I bet. I think anything in life, especially in business, you learn a lot of things real fast, real quick and real hard. Absolutely, hundred percent. So, go ahead and tell me about like what set it up for me. Like, what was this like? What were you doing? Um, yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, I, I'm. I, I tell people that I'm a recovering uh, real estate addict. So, I uh, I came from the real estate world, and uh, I did. Uh, you know, I grinded hard for about fifteen, uh, almost eighteen years, and uh, built a very large portfolio. And uh, you know, I got to a point where I just wasn't feeling fulfilled anymore. I wasn't feeling, um, you know, that I was challenged, that, you know, the, the things that I was doing on a regular, I mean, I'm like a typical entrepreneur, right? You get bored. And so I got bored and I decided to move into business acquisitions. I moved mm. into business acquisitions in 2020, um, right during, uh, right, right around the start of COVID. And I bought my first company uh, in Orlando, Florida. And that company did uh, did very well on the on the beginning on the outset. It was it was tough. Um, you know, we had some challenges, um, but overall, it did very well. But the reason why I'm telling you that is because that is what led me to my next acquisition in where the downfall happened. Um, gotcha. So you know, doing doing really well with real estate. Uh, you know, built a large empire, bought a first company. You know, life is good. Married, beautiful kids, healthy. Everything is great. I thought, you know, I was like full of piss and vinegar, like I can do anything. And then life has just a funny way of showing up of kicking you in the nuts and just saying, you know, welcome back to reality. And, uh, and this is what happened. So essentially, uh, I lost my second business in Miami, Florida. And that business, um, I lost about a million dollars. And um, um, yeah, that was, it was extremely tough. And, you know, to be honest with you, there were, there were a lot of things that I could have done differently, um, you know, and, and, and a lot of it is, is shiny object syndrome, right? So you have uh, a lot of probably your listeners have, have probably dealt with this where, you know, you're you're always looking for the cure. You're looking for the next um, solution to solve your problems. And for me at the time, I was trying to uh, solve a cash flow issue, just like typical real estate investors we're equity rich and cash poor. So I had a lot of equity in these properties, but I didn't have a lot of cash flow coming in because we just had a part of the game and there was just kind of cash flow down to the next floor. The problem is when, when, when people are looking for a quick, fast solution, they usually lose sight of any of the deficiencies or red flags that are, that are popping up and you just kind of dismiss them and, and move on. And that's exactly what I did. I dismissed a lot during the due diligence process of that business acquisition, and I made mistakes. And those mistakes were extremely costly. Um, you know, at, at the time, uh, my, my relationship with my, uh, my, well, my wife at the time, uh, completely strained. Um, you know, we're in financial. I, I felt like we were going to be in financial ruin, just going to bankruptcy. And um, it was an extremely tough time. I, I you know, I remember I bought the company. Right during, right before Christmas. So imagine this scenario, mm. right? Imagine you're sitting around, you're enjoying the holidays, you're excited to do, you know, a thousand 
dollar a month net income company uh, that you're looking forward to having. You're going through Christmas. You just spent a shit ton of money on Christmas gifts and throwing big parties and, and, and all this good stuff. And you're like, man, we're going to have this newfound wealth. It's going to be fantastic. I can't wait. So excited. And then the day you closed, which was for me, it was like two, two days before Christmas. We were supposed to be doing like $10,000 a day in debt. I mean, in, uh, in income. The first day I bought it, we barely broke $500. And I knew something was severely wrong. And the next day, again, like 450 The next day, 250 It was just getting worse and worse. And the worst part about all of this is that I bought a company that, you know, was, was, was four locations, supposed to be supporting, you know, uh, a $5 million a year revenue, uh, but we had $5 million a year. A co- we had a $5 million a year company of expenses. So not only were we not making the income, but we had all the expenses to go along with it. So we were losing our assets. And, um, you know, I jumped into action, tried to figure out what the problem was. Then I realized there was some really bad uh, fraud going on. <clears throat> and that's when I had to hire attorneys, went through all that, uh, you know, losing tremendous amounts of money. And, um, but the silver lining in all of this, and this is where, this is where the magic happens is that I, I, I hired a mindset coach in, in the middle of all of this mm-hmm. and, uh, by the name of Mike Kiko, Mike Kiko, I think you may have had him on here before. Mm-hmm. Um, but Mike has been a godsend in my life. He allowed me to change the way that I think and the way that I operate in how to get out of the dark place. I was in a very, very dark place, didn't know which way I was going to turn. And, uh, and Mike helped me, you know, basically change that mindset, getting out of, a, a, out of survival mode and back into creation mode. Because once I get into creation mode, that is where I thrive. Obviously, a lot of people can thrive in creation mode. But for me especially, that is my button. Like, that's where I, I, the switch just turns. And that's what I did. So I got, he's like, you got to get out of survival mode. You got to start getting back to thinking like Josh Wilson, thinking like, you know, the entrepreneur that you are thinking bigger and stop thinking so small in, 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 in survival mode. So that's what I did. So I com- completely changed my mindset, started thinking about ways that I can get myself out of this and create more income again. So I believe in manifesting. Um, I manifest a lot. Um, manifest a lot of things at one life, what I'm looking forward to. And at the time, I needed like forty to fifty thousand dollars a month of cash flow. I know this sounds like crazy problems, but first world problems. That is what it is. I was bleeding, um, and I put out into the universe. Everybody I talked to, I said, "I need a new deal. I need a deal." And I kept telling that to every single person. Well, sure enough, life just happens to show up. And you know, I always say it's never perfect, but it's always on time. And right. this is exactly what happened. Um, life showed up. Not it wasn't perfect the way it showed up, but it was the perfect timing the way it showed up. I needed it right at that moment. I was literally probably two weeks away from filing bankruptcy. Okay, and hold on, this a, second, deal hold on showed, a second. Yeah, I got I got questions. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I know that was a lot. No, no, that's Stop okay. Me. That's okay. I love hearing it because I have a, a big. Uh, uh, interest in business as well and a background in business. But um, I want to take a couple steps back and go back to like, you said that that year you were throwing big parties, you were buying um, gifts and stuff like that. And then two days before Christmas, you signed the deal or was it you signed the deal and then you found out like shit wasn't happening right. Two days before Christmas, we closed. Oh my goodness! And uh, yeah, and so we we knew right then and there that it wasn't it, that we, it was not working out the way it was supposed to. Now, was your wife at the time like on board with this, and she was good to go with this deal and everything? Everything looked good. Did she have any reservations and concerns? No, and look, in in, in, in her defense, um, you know, she trusted me, you know, and right. uh, that was that was tough, you know. So, uh, as a man, as a as, as a husband at the time, uh, you know, as a father. That was extremely tough. That was that that really that really tested all of the the inner workings inside of your mind of who you think you are and uh, who you're supposed to be and um, you know masculinity all that all that stuff you know so yeah I mean she was on board uh, she trusted me and so I you know uh, you know being the person I am um, I, you know I had to figure it out yeah. Yeah, that's got to be quite intense, um, especially going through the holidays, thinking like we've arrived. We now have, 
you know, this money that, you know, this, this new found money and level of, you know, come up and whatever. Um, yeah, that's yeah, got it, to be it, 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 it was, it was, extre- it was extremely tough. And, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that can, can probably relate, you know, again, like I was talking earlier about, you, you know, a lot of people out there looking for solutions and they're looking for solutions to their problems. And for me, this was a problem that I had. We had a, we had a cash flow program and um, I needed another business to help alleviate that. And it just, it didn't, it didn't work out, but, um, I, but the ending, the ending worked out beautifully. So it that never focused on me. <laughs> Oh, uh, hold on. You cut out for a second. What'd you say there again? Oh, no, I think I Bahamas, lost you. So... There we go. <laughs> yep. Sorry. No, that's okay. So, I was just saying, like, you know, like I said earlier, it's never perfect, but it's always on time. And, you know, life just has a funny way of just showing up when you, when you need it the most. I agree with that. So after Christmas or at around just before Christmas time, you realize you got this bad deal. Um, when did it start to like, how long was the process? Cause you said you had to hire attorneys. You had to do a whole bunch of stuff. Um, how long yep. was that process before or when you, when you signed the deal to when you, when you uh, yeah. found another deal? Yeah. So we were, so here, here's the, you know, paint the picture even a little more for you. We were on a uh, we were on a cruise right during Thanksgiving, and that is when we locked we we uh, we raised all the money, and we signed the deal. We locked up the deal, and we were set to close. Um, uh, we were set to close right before Christmas, so it was a pretty quick process. And um, and, and so once we uh, you know once we signed the deal, we we you know we're on the cruise. That was the great thing. We were on the cruise for Thanksgiving. We were so excited. We were amped up. We're like, man, this is you know. This is going to be, you know, incredible. It's going to be life changing. And for me, you know, that was like a, that was a big goal of mine is that I wanted to hit, you know, hundred K in net revenue for a month. And this deal was going to be able to push me well over that. And, um, you know, so, but again, you know, now looking back, um, you know, that, that's one of the, the lessons like that I, that I think about a lot is that, you know, a lot of times when we go through these problems, we we're having issues in life, whether it's your marriage or finances, whatever it is, you know, this too shall pass. It always does. It always seems to work itself out. It always seems to find a way of, of you know, you, at least as humans, we always seem to over, uh, over exaggerate and overthink everything. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, and I think that, you know, over time, if people would just let life happen a little more, and stop trying to force it, um, you know, things would, things would work out for the better. And I think that was my problem is that I was trying to force this deal. I was trying to force this newfound wealth versus letting stuff naturally be attracted to me versus trying to chase it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And then maybe the unmet expectations of like, okay, this has got to be it. This has got, it's, it's an opportunity in front of me. It must be mine. Cause not every opportunity right. in front of you is yours. It's yes, just 100%. there. <laughs> yep. Absolutely. And, and let me get into the fun part because this is, uh, yeah, you know, tell this, me. Is, this is the great part. So after, you know, I kept telling the universe and telling everyone that I needed a new deal. I needed a, a savior essentially. Somebody finally uh, stopped me in my tracks and it was, um, it was, it was one of the GMs of one of our companies. And he said, Josh, he was like, I actually have a deal. Um, but he's like, I want to warn you, you passed on this deal three years ago. Mm. And so I told him, I said, huh. I said, okay, well just send it to me again. Like I, I need the deal. So he ended up uh, sending me the deal again. I looked at it, you know, and, and I went through the lens with a, a, probably a different lens than I normally would have previously. Right. And I, you know, I did my proper due diligence, went through the process. I liked the deal. The guy that I bought it from was actually in a financial spot just like I was. And so that also kind of intrigued me a little bit because he was needing this deal just as bad as I was. So him and I spoke. We got the deal done. Um, it, the deal that we got was it, it's the numbers are incredible on it. Uh, especially looking back now, I bought it in March of 2023. So it was la- almost a year ago now yeah. uh, since I've had this deal. And this is the part where life just shows up and when you completely don't expect it. So when I go to meet this guy about three months after I buy this company, 
I go meet him at Bank of America. I walk into Bank of America and I, I put my hand out and I said, hey, how you doing, man? Uh, my name's, uh, you know, Josh Wilson. And this is the first time we ever met. And even though we already we already closed the transaction, and everything, we did everything electronically. So meet him for the first time. I put my hand out, shake his hand. He said, hey, man, how you doing? My name's John. Thank you so much. You're an angel. He's like, you saved my house or you saved me from losing my house. And I literally put my hand right back to him and said, man, well, you saved me from losing mine. And that moment right there, it, it just, it sparked a core. It just, it struck something within me because I'm like, man, like life just has this crazy way of bringing people together sometimes when, when you, you, you both need it. And, you know, it, it, it's, and a lot of times, like I said earlier, it's like, we try to force it. And it's like, life is trying to, life is trying to let things happen and, and things will happen the way they're supposed to be. It's just that a lot of times we just force things. And this deal, I didn't force. I let it happen yeah. naturally. I gave my offer. He replied back with his offer. We just, it worked out. We didn't force it. We didn't rush it. It was, it just happened naturally and it fit for both parties. And when it, when it works out like that, I feel like it works out so beautifully. So this is the fun part. That deal, I lost a million dollars in Miami, right? But had I not lost that million dollars, Faith, had I not lost that million, I would have never been able to realize the multi seven figures that I got from this deal. So yeah, think about it. Think about it this way. So had I not lost that money, I would have probably still have turned that deal down and it would have never gone back and never right. even touched the deal that I have now. And, um, you know, that to me is just, that's just amazing how just life works and how, um, you know, how things really do happen for a reason and you just got to let it play out. I agree with that. I call those the silver linings because even though on the outset they look like they're brutal and they're kicking you and they're like flinging you backward and making you questioning everything you ever thought about life and business and love and everything in the world. But then all of a sudden it's like, no, this is a lesson you needed to learn so that when this next deal came along, maybe it's giving you a little more grace, a little more empathy, a little more, you know, leaning into something that you probably wouldn't have before. Oh, absolutely. To just show you, it I, just shows you. It does. And and also I think, you know, uh, you know, the failures, right? The failures, yeah. you know, creates character. It creates uh it it it, uh, it allows you to, you know, almost look at yourself and, and turn it inside out, you know, if, if that makes any sense. Um yeah. you know, for me I did I did a lot of a uh, lot of self um, a lot of self reflection. Uh, there was a lot of mindset changes I had to go through and I have never done that ever in the past, you know, since my entire career, since I've started, I've never looked internally about what, what I'm doing internally to make, you know, myself better. And, uh, you know, when I went through that transformation, it was like the light bulb just clicked on. And now again, I'm, I'm in creation mode now and we're running a hundred miles an hour and I have never felt better. My health is in incredible shape. Uh, my relationships are in a great place. Um, you know, my businesses are thriving. My team's doing incredible. We have now over six companies in four states, 150 employees. Like, looking wow. back last year, I would have thought my life was in ruins. Like, I would have thought my life would have been turmoil. Now, looking back on, like, that was just a blip on the radar, you know? Like, it's just the that's beginning. just life. It's, exactly. And, um, and so you, you almost have to look back at that and, and, and learn the lessons from that moment and just understand that this too shall pass and that you will get through it. Um, but, it's never going to be like this forever. And even the good times, right? The good times don't last forever either. No. And so you have to understand there's going to be ups and downs in life. And I was just on a, uh, I was on a mastermind call before this uh, podcast here. And one of the things that I, I shared with that group is that I said that, you know, this life that we do, the, the work on our minds, the, the way we cope, the way we operate, it's never ending. If you think there is a finish line at the end, you are in, you're in the wrong place. Uh, you know, as far as your mindset goes, because there is not a finish line. You're going to be running a race that you're never going to win. And um, that is one thing that brings me like internal peace, knowing that, um, you know, that it's never ending work, that I'm always constantly going to be evolving. My seasons are constantly going to be changing. My circle is going to change and I'm okay with that. I'm at, I'm at peace with that. Yeah. I, well, I want to, I want to make one point there. Like, there is an end to the finish line, but the end is death. Like to be a hundred percent real. 
And I heard this saying years ago and it stuck with me and it says, if you're not learning, you're dying. Mm -hmm. And when yeah. your mindset, like that's the biggest thing. I think even in grief, like when we talk about grief and losing someone, um, someone so significant and substantial in your life, um, it's the mindset work that plays the the toughest tricks on you. The shoulda, coulda, wouldas, the, you know, the, the battles of the nothingness. Um, and I think that even going through and losing like a million dollars in business, you still go through the, that process. You still go through like, oh my God, what do I do now? Like I have yeah. this emptiness, like I don't know where to go. I don't know what to do, but the quickest thing to do anything is to take a step and just whether it's right or wrong, take a step, recalibrate, take another one, recalibrate and keep going. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that, that is so true. I, you know, I go back and I, I try to, I try to remember those days, you know, like, um, you know, and, and try to re replay those out of my mind. And, you know, I just remember, you know, thinking back then, like when it first started that I can, I can literally vividly remember that Christmas morning, waking up that day thinking, what am I going to do? Like, I've, I've been working my entire life to get to this point and I'm literally going to let it all just fall apart because of this one deal. And, um, you know, that was extremely tough to, to actually have to, you know, cope through, navigate through and, and talk myself through it, but I got through it. That's the, that's the best part is that it, yeah. you know, you're going to go through you, and look, it, it didn't happen quick. It wasn't like something that just, okay, next day I was like, bam, I'm changing my mindset. I'm going to do it. It didn't happen that fast. It was, it was over time changing the way I think, changing the way I operate and looking at problems differently versus, you know, having a victim mentality constantly thinking, why this is happening to me, you know, questioning all those things, getting out of that lane. Once I got out of that lane, then it was like, we're just going to now solve the problems. We're going to solve the problems. Yes, we're going to grieve. We're going to have our time to grieve. We're going to have our time to, you know, feel sorry. But then at a certain point, you got to turn the switch and you got to move. Yeah. And, uh, and, that, and that's what I had to do. And, uh, man, it, you know, I, I just, life, life happens for a reason. And, um, you know, this one, this one definitely turned out for the better. Well, good. That's amazing. How long was the time process? So you said, uh, what was it? 2022 you that signed the deal? Yeah. Yeah. That was 2022. Uh, when I, so November, 2022, I signed the deal and, um, actually, no, I take that back. Um, Yes, November 2022, signed the deal, closed December 2022, and then bought the uh, next business in March of 2023. So imagine, okay. you know, imagine, imagine that, right? You're, you're the spouse of, of, uh, of someone else. They mm -hmm. lose a million dollars and they tell you, oh, by the way, we're going to buy another $1.5 million deal <laughs> in three months later. Talk about freak out uh, session. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. But, you know, that, that's just the, uh, that's, that's the life of an entrepreneur. It's the right life of, uh, you know, I guess just being a risk taker. And, um, but man, um, again, I'm not, I am not trying to, you know, I'm not trying to hit home runs every time. I just want base hits and uh, I just want base hits and the base hits will get me, you know, they'll get me the home run eventually. Yeah. It's not about making big sweeping changes. It's about making those tiny little imperceptible ones just to keep you right on track or to steer to a different, you know, in a different lane, whatever, just to get you to where you want to go. You just have to have a yep. clue as to where you want to go. Yeah. You have to have some sense of direction. Um, you know, it's like, they always say, you know, people are like, you know, yeah, you just got to drive, you know, just, just crank up the gas, put, you know, down on the pedal. Sometimes speed is not the option or it's not the answer. Um, you know, sometimes the direction of where you're going is the answer, making sure you're on the right road. And, um, that's, you know, for me, that, that was, that was the crucial point is that I had to slow down, stop what I was doing, figure out, you know, get on the right road. And then once I figure out what road I was on, then go a little bit faster to get closer to my destination. Yeah, that's good advice. That's good advice in anything you're doing. Um, even with the grief, like if you have no idea where you want to go, or like, even if you want to get out of grief, like a lot of people just want to stay stuck in grief because it's familiar to them. It's, it's, they know that path as opposed to saying, okay, I want to get out of it. I want to choose this lane and move through my grief and see where that takes me. Um, and a lot of people just don't, but it's a choice. You know, yep. you're, you're continually making choices every day. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, you know, the, the grief that I had, um, that was just, you know, it, it wasn't like, it wasn't something that, uh, you know, I, I just got through and, Sorry, the airplane flying over me and heading here. 
Um, you know, it wasn't something that I just immediately got through. And I just want to be clear about that. I want I want to understand that I didn't like I didn't take I didn't take a magic pill. I didn't pick up some supplements or something and just got through my my issues. I mean, I still have to this day a little PTSD from that moment. Sure. And, um, and and that and that I think will happen. I think that will continue to carry on at some point. It may not be as prevalent down the road as time evolves, but um, just know that um, you know life does get better. Things move on. Things change. Seasons are going to change, and you know. That, that time will heal. Time, uh, time definitely helps heal, um, uh, you know, a lot of problems, a lot of pain. And for me, that, that is, uh, you know, a true testament of that. Looking back a year later now, um, you know, I'm definitely not in the pain that I was in before. But I think that's also, you know, a few factors. Number one, I've changed the way I think. Number two, I've had time to actually grieve and actually get over it. Um, and then number three, I, I took actions to making sure that I wanted to make a change. So, you know, you can grieve and you can be stuck in that place for a very, very long time and never get out of it. But until you decide personally and internally that you want to make a change and you want to better yourself and you want to get out of that place that you're in, all it takes is just one flip of the switch to say, today I'm changing. I'm not going back to where I was yesterday. And that one little step, one little change can do all the all the work, uh, you know, that you can set out uh, to do, you know, going forward. And for me exactly what it was just making that mind shift change that i'm not going to go back i'm not going to feel sorry for myself and uh that 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 did it for me yeah that's good advice that's some very good advice um as far as for anything like business grief everything uh because it's literally making that change and i love that i don't want to be in the same place i was yesterday because i didn't like where i was at yesterday so today i want to make a change and i want to move forward and go in a different path in a different direction and we'll see where it takes me Absolutely. I take me down a, a, a dead end road, but at least I'm not in the same place I was. I have a little bit more knowledge. And, and just understanding that it's never ending work. Right. Yeah. So like understanding that you're not going to solve all your problems today and you're probably not going to solve them tomorrow, but it's just never ending work. It's constantly evolving, constantly working on yourself and knowing that. Um, and, and again, that brings me so much peace, like knowing that I'm not like even if I have problems tomorrow, they're not going to be solved. Uh, even if, let's just say, for instance, even have small like business problems, right? Yeah, we can solve those. But at the end of the day, the internal of your life, all that, it's, it's never ending work. Even like when you go to the gym and you go work, you can't just like stop working on the next day. You know, so you're gonna still be able to have the same you know, body you had, you know, days before that. It's going to change. It's never ending work. You constantly have to work on it uh, to make sure. Um, you know, that you keep that body, but the same thing goes for your mind and, and your heart, and your soul. It's never ending work of getting better and staying on top of your game. I love that. Thank you so much. Uh, very, very, very wise words uh, that can be applicable to anything in life. Uh, I absolutely love it. Uh, can you leave our listeners with um, another piece of advice? Like if you had to drop a bombshell on them for grief or life or mindset or whatever, what would you tell them? Man, um, you know that, uh, and, and I, I guess I probably said it before, but I just, I, I think that, you know, life is short. You need to live it. You need to stop getting out of your head with all these stories that you tell yourself um, and understand that you are, you are a great person. You are not the stories that you tell yourself every single day or the people that have told you and that just constantly put these stories in your head. Um, and, you know, once you can break that change and realize that and you can start cultivating new stories and a new life inside here, everything in your life will change. Everything. And, I, again, I, take, I give a lot of credit back to my mentor, Mike, um, because he's done that for me. And... Um, I think that if you can change those stories in your head, um, you will have a entirely different new uh, chapters in your book that you'll be able to start writing. I love that. That is perfect ending. Thank you so much, Josh, for being on the podcast and sharing your story and talking with us all. And I look forward to seeing everyone else in the next episode. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you so much for listening to this special episode of Release. All the links plus a few extras are posted in the show notes below. And if you think someone you know could benefit by listening to this episode, please share it with them. And as always, keep going, keep being, keep doing. You are amazing.